Hi, welcome back. Today in the part 3, we'll explore more about the Xiaomi interface uh, and to see what are the options they can set uh, and also what are the firewall and security policies that they have built in. So now, let's take a look at the browser login page. So now let's take a look at the browser login page. Um, at the glance, it basically has a QR code. The QR codes when you scan actually go into my Wi-Fi app on your mobile phone and that allows you to log in but unfortunately on my ios app it doesn't work right it cannot even detect the router so i have a challenge in doing that that is probably a good feedback to xiaomi in terms of how the software development need to be better done so that it can actually detect it so on my browser so let me just log in with the access code so in this login you'll see that uh, it shows you what is your device configuration? There's actually seven units here, right? That's connected to the Wi-Fi. And this is the two Wi-Fi SSIDs on the 2.4G and the 5G band. And on the right, that's where you see it's connected to your internet. And the two green lines shows that connectivity is in place. So on the left side of the window, you have the 2.4G configuration with your Wi-Fi SSID, uh, your secret key or a passphrase, passcode, and the number of connections accessed to the 2.4G band. Likewise, on the right side, it shows the 5G band, and that is uh, seven devices connected to it. On the lower part of the browser page, it shows you your product model number. It shows you your firmware level, uh, the MAC address, as well as serial number of the device. So this is a good thing where you do not need to go to look at underneath of your device to see what is the serial number, MAC address, uh, and even the product name, right? So everything is, is on the cool page. So the good thing about this interface, it is really simple. But it shows you the information that you need to start connecting your mobile devices or your laptop or your PCs onto the network. Right, good start. So, uh, the one of the key thing about this interface is that it is built in Chinese, simplified Chinese. So you have a little bit knowledge of simplified Chinese that is easy. Uh, for those who don't have, later I'll just show you that Google Translate actually does work for some, but not perfect. Right, but we just need to have understanding what field is for what kind of configuration so we can choose the right options or do the right setting. So let me go to the commonly used uh, setup. So you can see here, Google allows you to translate. So I'll show you the translation in a while, but now let's go into the native Chinese setup to walk you through what this pane shows and what are the things they configure. First option here is basically the Wi-Fi 2-in-1, basically combine the two bands into a single SSID and it allows the device to switch between the two 2.4 gig or the 5 gig bands for optimal access to your Wi-Fi. Right, that actually simplifies a lot of configuration. But in my current setup, I actually isolate them for do testing to do performance so that we can control which band we are testing for the performance. Right, simple access here, right? You basically configure your SSID. You configure the WPA setting, whether you want WPA, WPA2, or WPA3. So in this config configuration here, it's set at WPA and WPA2. Uh, the reason for that is, is because we have set up as a Wi-Fi 5 compatibility mode. That allows it to connect to older generation devices that cannot discover the Wi-Fi 6 network. So in my own testing, I have two laptops here with Windows 7 that basically would not be able to discover this access point if I change it to Wi-Fi 6 mode, right? So I, the only way is to downgrade with Wi-Fi 5 compatibility and then now the other two devices, Windows 7 does go with it. So I've tested it on my iOS, on my Android, and my on my Windows 10 PC and laptops. Everything works perfectly with the Wi-Fi 6 configuration except the older Windows 7 devices. So if you have Windows 7 devices, you will probably have to turn on this Wi-Fi 5 compatibility mode. But if you are using Windows 10, mobile devices, Android and iOS, then I would suggest leave it at Wi-Fi 6 so to take advantage of the Wi-Fi 6 performance boost capabilities. Right? The rest of the setting are by default, the multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, right? and also AIoT. So if you have the AIoT devices, uh, you can actually turn it on, but if you do not, then basically also turn it off. So what it happens is that if you turn it off, uh, the extra blue light on the AIoT antenna will be switched off. Uh, in this case, it is switched on, so we can allow it to connect AIoT devices quickly onto the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so so what we have here on the 2.4 gig band, we have the ability to set the bandwidth, whether you use the 40 megahertz or 20 megahertz or both. So for most compatible devices, we set it for both, right? And this device uh, also allows it to choose 
what kind of uh, signal strength. So we have the uh, Chuan Chiang. Chuan Chiang means uh, go through the wall. Right? So basically, it's a very strong signal strength, allow you to have a very broad coverage. So this is the selection that I've done. Uh, and later, I'll show you the floor plan of my house, what is my current restriction on my old Wi-Fi, uh, and also what this new AX3600 allows my Wi-Fi signal to do, uh, penetrating further into my entire floor plan so that I have roaming access from any point in my house with very strong Wi-Fi signal. Okay, so likewise for the Wi-Fi 5 band, 5G band, basically then we have a broader selection, whether you go for 160 megahertz, which is good, then you can actually make full use of the Wi-Fi 6 capability with 2.4 gigabit per second uh, download performance. Right. Okay, so this is basically the key configuration that you need to go to. For the uh, internet access, basically this is the part that will show you what is your DHCP to your uh, modem or gateway. Right, to show connectivity right so the rest here is basically nothing much you need to set it's a very simple configuration let's go to security center okay security center here is really basic it doesn't have the traditional complexity where you set the rules basically the first one is basically setting out your blacklist and whitelist if you have any devices that you want to block you can blacklist them or you can only have a whitelist that means you record all your MAC addresses of all your devices so that is actually the safest right only authorized devices can connect to your Wi-Fi network right this is to prevent misuse also prevent theft right because you may have rogue devices scanning your SSID gaining access through the password they have set if it's a simple password it's much easier for them to hack right so using a whitelist is actually very secure Right, so once you have all your devices connected up, look through all the MAC address that has been available, add them into this whitelist. Below the second part is actually to set your password. Right? If you want to change it, you can actually change your password for this part. Okay, now let's go to the next screen. So this basically set your DHCP setting for all your devices getting onto your access network. So down here, the basic IP address for the Xiaomi uh, AX3600 is actually 192.168.31.1 so you'll be on the 31 subnet uh, and you can set the IP address to start from whatever number range so in this configuration we set it from 5 to 254 right? and the expiry time for the lease is 720 seconds okay let's go to the configuration here Right, so here basically is a firmware upgrade. Right? If there is a new firmware, it will actually prompt you and then it can automatically fetch the latest firmware from the internet from Xiaomi's website and bring it down and install and upload onto your router. Right, the rest here is basically nothing much. So one of the functionality here you could do is also to reset to default, especially when you want to sell off this device. It's always recommended to reset to factory default. Test it out, make sure it really has only the default settings before you sell it off, pass on to your buyer. Okay, so let me just go back here and uh, show you the English setup. Okay, so we switch to English. Okay, we do always translate. So here is the English version of the website being translated by Chrome, right? It's not done by Xiaomi, so it's actually a translation. From what I've seen from this translation, it's pretty much accurate. So if you have a very basic understanding of what you need to set up, you can actually get things done here with that kind of translation. So like just I mentioned, the dual band 21, right? This is a good description. Basically, you just have a single SSID for both bands, right? And also the setup here it has been translated uh, into native English uh, through the Chinese translation. So like uh, Chuan Chiang is through the wall. So this is signal strength. And then the rest will be standard and energy saving. So it all depends uh, what kind of strength you want. Right? You can actually test it, see whether it affects your lifestyle right? and whether the signal is too strong. Right? If it's too strong, then probably you can change it to standard. If you feel that you know, everything is good, right? if not, then you can reduce it to energy saving. But of course, when you go for standard energy saving, then the penetration rate of the signal when you have a complex concrete uh, house like ours in Singapore, then it becomes harder to pass through the walls. Okay? Right? So pretty much very good. I will say the transition is great internet translation right not every not every site has a translation like in this case doesn't right so not every site have a english translation by default detected by chrome right like in this case uh security center can be translated so you translate so blacklist whitelist 
uh, LAN setting, no, it does not. Um, configuration, yes, it does. So it tells you system version, the upload log, the reset, the backup recovery, and the time zone. Right? So this is a pretty much basic setup for this. Let's go for the advanced setting. Uh, the advanced setting here basically talk about the QoS. You can actually restrict uh, upload and download bandwidth. So it will not saturate your entire internet access. So for my case here, I, I don't want to restrict. I want it to have full performance. So in any my case, any device, if you need the bandwidth to do massive download, like you are installing Windows as on a new PC or laptop, you want it to have full access so that you can bring down the patches, bring down the updates right as fast as you can. Right? Upload as well, I mean for us content creators, then we want to have the mass have the full performance for us to upload our content to YouTube and then we can quickly share out with our viewers and subscribers. Very basic stuff you look at is really nothing fantastic. DHCP, right? You can set up the range here. Uh, you can configure dynamic DNS. Right, you can look at it. the field is really only one single section, really not much. Right? So right, these are all the DMZ zone setup. Right? If you want to have a different subnet, you can do that. VPN setup, very basic stuff. Set up a VPN with any VPN connections, right? And it allows you to have tunneling across. Um, the others is basically UPnP if you have that, right? So this is basically everything that you can do on the AX3600. Now let's take a look at the floor plan of my place. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty much of a long shape. Uh, it has a lot of walls, and with the walls, that means it actually hinders the Wi-Fi signal going through. So in my previous setup, uh, this is what I have. We have the uh, D-Link. Now let me take you through the floor plan of my place. As you can see from this diagram, it's a pretty much of a long orientation where there's many side walls uh, blocking the Wi-Fi signal from penetrating through the other rooms that we have used. So what we have uh, in this setup is actually a DRA868L from D-Link. It's a Wi-Fi 5 AC1715 dual band router. Uh, in terms of Wi-Fi coverage, it's pretty effective uh, in pre-COVID situation where we work from home only after uh, office hours. Uh, that is when we come back, we have our dinner and then we retire to the master bedroom to watch a movie and then we use our mobile device to catch up with entertainment on YouTube, on uh, some websites and our email. So it's pretty much okay during that time. But you will also notice that actually some blind spots. So the blind spots are pretty much a specific corner in our master bedroom where the signal strength is actually quite weak uh, and also on the second bedroom on the upper left hand side right? and that is where we will not receive Wi-Fi signal in the extreme left hand corner right? and that is where we will lose signal and we will have to switch to 4G mobile and at times we actually exceeded our rate without noticing that we actually dropped the Wi-Fi signal and went into 4G. The other one is actually in the kitchen in the service balcony where there's actually not much of a signal and sometimes it's, it's at best a few megabits per second. So what we did was actually we used some of our um, previous Wi-Fi 4 routers from ASUS. These are all the annual renewal free router uh, gifts from the ISPs. So we actually use this and set up uh, as hotspots or access points that has an Ethernet uh, link back to the main router. So that give us pretty much good coverage. We use this for like about a month or two. Uh, it gives us good coverage if you are stationary within the master bedroom or in the second bedroom. Uh, but there is challenges, especially when we cross over zones, especially when we are walking from second bedroom into the master bedroom where we actually have to cross a few zones. That is where we will temporarily lose uh, signal and that's where our zoom call will get suspended for about 10 to 15 seconds. Right, and this is the situation that uh, really irritates us, especially when we are on a prolonged call, we move around in the house, we actually lose the conversation. Right? And, and that is really a, a problem that, that we face. So in this situation, uh, what we want to do is actually look at the AX3600 as a potential replacement. So I bought it off AliExpress. And this wireless router is a Wi-Fi 6, uh, come with dual band AX. So this gives us an opportunity to test whether it is suitable. Right? And as you can see from the early configuration, it's actually a pretty basic uh, router setup, but it does possess uh, what we call through the wall signal strength. Right? And, and this is actually something that we hope right, it actually does its job well. So in setting this up, we actually put it in the center of the whole house where we find that 
is is somewhere in this um, study area and it is pretty much uh, close to the center of the house so we hope that the signal strength at the extremities where we previously have the blind spots actually we will resolve it through this setup so let us look into these three areas right uh, x1 and x2 and x3 these are the three areas we want to test and see you know what's the network performance through speed test so do know that this speed test also depending on the network bandwidth we have from the ISP and also the number of people assessing the uh, sites and also the internet access especially during this time when all of us are all working from home the internet bandwidth could actually be throttled so this is not a realistic um, performance benchmark in good days we actually can get exceeding 900 megabits per second on the network right so let me walk you through that in this setup uh, the Samsung S10 plus is on Wi-Fi 5 compatibility mode with the AX3600 so this is the baseline we want to do right what we get at the closest point to the router let's take a look at the performance okay so now let's take a look at the x1 right what is the speed right that we get at this extreme point okay so now let's take a look at the next point the x2 this is the one of the worst space to have because it's really blocked by many many series of walls uh, and it's also furthest away from the router okay now let's move on to the other blind spot in the master bedroom okay we're done that's great come let's take a look at the summary in the baseline we're getting a good effective download speed of about 645 megabits per second and the upload of 441 that is my baseline that is about two meters away from the router in the X1 Wi-Fi weak spot, we're getting a good download speed of 477 megabits, which is very decent. I mean, the work that we do, we actually don't need high bandwidth, right? But the upload speed of 120 megabits is still sufficient. In the furthest extreme corner in service balcony, we drop that by almost half of weak spot X1. We get about 219 megabits per second, right? And the upload speed of only 66, which is okay if you are doing texting, doing some voice call. I think this is pretty much adequate for that. Right in the master bedroom, right, the, the performance is actually quite good 417 download and 232 megabits upload. So, what's the verdict for this? Let's look at the pros. Uh, it's a very solid built hardware with very beautiful aesthetic design. Uh, it comes with actually a very fantastic, and I'm really shocked with the Wi Fi signal strength, the through the wall configuration that actually allows it right, to have a single router that covers my entire house. So, that is one of the very strong advantages. But let's take a look at the cons, right? From the setup, from the user interface, you can find that it's actually a very basic Wi-Fi firmware, right? It does the job well, but it's really uh, simple. The other one is also the very basic user interface in Chinese. So I mean, for me, um, Chinese speaking, so to me, it's not really a big issue. But the interface lacks a lot of configuration, a lot of details that we can do. The third one is actually a very limited firewall functionality, and this is the area that I'm pretty much uh, very concerned. So now, from a scoring perspective, we will use a range of between 1 to 5 stars. And in this aspect, based on my early expectation uh, and also the verdict, here is the rating. So I'm giving it a 4 star out of 5. right? And for the good reason that it has a very strong fundamental for the hardware. Right? It's really good. The software, if it can be further improved in the next 3-6 months, Right, I think it has strong potential to be a strong contender for the Wi-Fi 6 router in the market. For me, when I look at this, I can accept the basic firmware, basic interface, but the firewall is actually one of my key concerns. I am working on setting up a PFSense router firewall box in my home, so that gives me a added layer of firewall protection. And um, in my next coming videos, I'll share with you the setup of the PFSense and how it works on my network. I hope you like this video and this is a three part series so you have missed my first and second part do take a look uh, and I appreciate all your comments feedback to help me make the video even better. Have a good day and I'll catch you in my next video.